All right, so in the last few videos, I talked about how to render content, uh, as well as how to handle conditionals and how to loop over data. Uh, now we're gonna go a bit more deep and talk about attribute binding. Now that's pretty much what it says. It's taking some attribute of a DOM element and connecting it to data in Alpine. Now for this, Alpine will use a new directive, x-bind, and because it's something that you tend to use a lot, there's even a shorthand for it. Let's look at a simple example. So in this application, I have two variables, cat image and initial text. And if I want to bind, let's say a placeholder value for an input field, I can use x dash bind, I'll make that a little bit bigger there, placeholder equals initial text. And if I were to change that value, uh, it would obviously update the bound item as well. Let's go ahead now and use that image. I'll just drop that in there like so. And again, x dash bind colon, and then source equals the variable. Now, I mentioned that there was a handy shortcut, and all that is is taking off x dash bind and just keeping the colon. And that's all it needs. And if I change that data, we'll go ahead and do that so you can see the image change. It'll get bigger. There you go. So now let's look at another example. So Alpine will uh, do a bit more when it comes to binding and classes. So in this application, I have one variable highlighted, it's false, but I have two classes for my paragraph tags, bright and basic. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a paragraph tag and we'll do it like so. Pardon my, my uh, very loud typing. All right, so you can see uh, the paragraph tag is in there. The basic class, which is just blue, was applied. Now here comes the fun part. I'm gonna bind class. And basically, if highlighted is true, I wanna add the bright class. So let's see how we can do that. I've used the bind directive, and again, I used the shortcut. And I just have a simple little, you know, highlighted, if true, add bright, otherwise add nothing. Now here comes the fun part. I will go ahead and make this true. And you will see that both classes are applied. So normally, if I were to bind something, it would just overwrite the value. But Alpine is intelligent enough to know that, hey, he already had a class applied. I am conditionally adding another class. So again, really, really handy. Now, a last thing that I want to show you, and this ties into the last video of where I was doing looping. One of the things that Alpine recommends when you're working with a set of data is that you give it a way to uniquely identify information. If you remember, I had a list of cat objects. They had IDs, names, and genders. What I can do in my loop is add a key attribute, and I'm binding it, and I'm putting it to cat ID. And what this is going to do is if Alpine has to change like one particular cat in there, it's going to make it more performant. Now, you won't see that in this really short example here. But when, when working with larger sets of data, it's going to come in handy. So again, all I did uh, is add that key. Visibly, it looks the exact same. Uh, but I will get that performance boost once my application grows and gets more complex.